Hello everybody, welcome to Red Tool House. On today's video, I want to take on a topic that see pop up from time to time. And this is really geared toward people that just want to start a more self-reliant lifestyle or getting into modern homesteading, whatever you want to call it. But the question I see pop up a lot are, hey, I'm just getting started or I'm saving up to do this. We're getting ready to move out of the city. What are the tools that I need to get started with my homestead? So let's tackle that topic because that actually could get kind of complicated. So clearly the biggest expense when you're starting homesteading is your land and, and the house you're going to live in, of course. So we're assuming that that's already taken care of. You've acquired your land. You have some sort of dwelling, whether it's a tiny house, whether it's a completely finished house or you're living in a van down by the river on your property, then you've got that taken care of. And to, to list five specific tools it really isn't easy to do or isn't really fair either because there's such a broad range. So what I'm going to do is list five groups, five tool groups that I think you should look at. And we'll start with the basic of the tools that represent that group. And then we'll talk about upgrades that you could upgrade all the way up to this point. Because if we went straight to the five categories of tools I want to talk about in the highest upgrade, then we could get into thousands and thousands of dollars in expense here. And I'd really want to present something that if you're just starting out and you've got a very small budget, these things can get you going. So what's interesting in discussing this specific topic is you know, things that I assume that people have, they don't necessarily have. You can have somebody that's totally green, has never had a single tool in their lives and not had any of that experience, to somebody that's just grown, like me, grown up rural, and you've always had access to this type of stuff. Now, you maybe necessarily didn't hone your craft with it, but you've at least had access to it. Things have been given to you. You inherited stuff from your father, your grandfather, those type of things. So we're going to set all that aside and assume that everybody's starting from scratch and their toolbox is completely empty. So here's my list of top five tools, and they're in no specific order. So on a typical homestead, of course, you'll have a garden. You'll be raising some of your own food, and of course, you need the tools to do that. And again, you can start very basic here. I think, in my mind, there's really three basic hand tools that you can start with with gardening. So those basic tools you need to start would be a shovel, a rake, and a hoe. No, not me. The tool. Now granted, the upgrade for these things could be endless. Uh, you could get to where you, know, you want a tractor or a big walk behind, tiller, all of those things. And of course, there's just tons and tons of tools that people incorporate in their garden. But what do you think, Kelly? Do you think a homesteader could start a garden with just these three tools? Oh, absolutely. I think, um, with this, especially with a small garden, that's all you're going to need. Um, so we started with. So one of the obvious groups, of course, is hand tools. If you're on a homestead, I think you're always going to find yourself either needing to build new projects or repair existing infrastructure, uh, take care of those type of things, maintenance stuff. So really starting out, you could say the most important hand tool to have is a small collection of the most basic. So you know, clearly a hammer, you know, maybe some measuring devices, a tape measure, a hand saw. There's, there's just a variety of simple hand tools that are not power tools that could get you started in any building project. And they're not going to be that expensive. I mean, you can get a hammer now for less than 10 bucks. It may not be a great hammer, but... Uh, there's tons of used equipment, used tools that you can find in yard sales and all that to get what you need. So I would start with some of those basics. Now, as far as upgrading, my goodness, the sky's the limit when it comes to upgrading. You know, you take your hand saw and you turn it into a power saw. You take your hammer and you turn it into a pneumatic nailer or electric nailer. You take uh, your speed square. I guess maybe just get a bigger speed square. <laughs> But you got laser levels, you got laser transit, you got all of these things. So the sky would be the limit as far as the tools that you could upgrade to. But I think just starting out and moving to your homestead, knowing that you're going to build some basic infrastructure for your livestock or for your garden, then just a good set of, of hand tools would be a great place to start. So since we're talking about tools, I want to take the opportunity real quick to give a shout out to Tyler's company, Giltech. And multiple months ago, Tyler sent me a lot of these titanium knives. There's all kinds of different... Oh, those are feed tags. Brand new knives made out of titanium. 
it's really this everyday carry knife. And he said, hey, Troy, I want to send you a bunch of these. I want you to try them out, use them on the homestead, use them on the farm um, all day, all the time, and let me know what you think. So this one I've literally been holding on to for about three months. I use it every day on the homestead. You can see there's a little bit of rust on the blade because of my sweaty pockets. <laughs> so that's, that's the only downside is my body sweat uh, makes those um, blades rust a little bit. But the neat thing about these are just replaceable. So it's just a standard utility knife blade that you can take out of there and uh, swap them out. But it has an, an, all kinds of little features. It has uh, you know, a small cutter here on the back so we can cut string. It's got a, a flat blade screwdriver, of course a bottle opener, pry, whatever the case may be. And he has all kinds of different types. I have another one that I've been carrying every day in my when I'm out and about, so it's not rusty and, and those type of things. And it's he, he actually sent left-handed ones, so uh, he makes them left-handed and right-handed. So been using them for opening feed sacks, been using them anytime I need a knife. So um, really, really like these, and I love the fact that he is he's making these himself here in the United States. I believe he's out in Colorado. And he's making these uh, all on his own, has his own manufacturing. And I love to support American-made company and really enjoy talking with Tyler and getting to know his product more. So Tyler's obviously extended an offer for us. If you use offer code RTH, you can take 15% off at checkout. And he said if there happens to be anything out of stock, go ahead and place the order for it and he'll manufacture it right there. That's the cool thing. He doesn't have to wait for everything to come from overseas. He can make it right there in his shop and get it sent out to you. So be sure to check him out. I'll put some information below in the video description. Go for it. So another very important tool for homesteaders is something for food preservation for all of the food you're going to be producing on your farm. Starting out with a water bath canner, you can find those pretty cheap. Um, and then as you upgrade, you can either upgrade to you know a pressure canner, which is a little bit more, um, other methods using dehydrators or um, smoking or um, you know even up to a chest freezer. Now, I think another important tool to start with on the homestead, and I may be a little biased since I live in the heart of the Appalachian forest, but is some way to cut firewood. If you're just starting with a homestead and the sky's the limit, then most of you are going to cut firewood to burn either for campfires, to heat water, to heat your house, those type of things. So I, I think you have to start with some way to cut wood. But you also may find that instead of just firewood, maybe you're cutting wood for uh, tomato steaks, those type of things. You got to go out and harvest some branches and some limbs to do other things. Then, you know, a simple hand saw will work to cut what you need to cut. Now, of course, the logical upgrade, and this would be one of the things, again, being biased that I would upgrade to very quickly, is the chainsaw. Now, the chainsaw is just obviously a much more efficient way of using one of these. Um, you can obviously fell full-size trees. You can do a lot more with it and, of course, be way more efficient as well in what you're cutting. So a simple hand saw like this, you know, less than 20 bucks probably. And then you're going to get up into multiple hundreds, close to $1,000, and you get into the larger chainsaws. But this will give, be a great place to start for when you need to cut wood. So again, on this next one, I'm probably a little biased because we live so rural. But if you do live rural and you have the opportunity for hunting, for food collection and of course even personal protection, then I highly recommend some sort of firearm. Now my suggestion would be start with a shotgun, preferably a 12 gauge or a 16 gauge, because that's gonna be the most versatile. You can put slugs in it to hunt a larger uh, game. You can go with the bird shot if you're gonna be doing you know, turkey or grouse or those type of things. It gives you a lot of versatility and of course even for personal protection, Nobody likes to hear the sound of a slide being shucked in their general direction, so that's usually good for a theft deterrent. So the upgrades, wow, the upgrades, the sky's the limit, right? You know, Howard Sears, that's a, no. You obviously, as you have more opportunities to, to, you have more needs, like if you're gonna be really into deer hunting and maybe at that point you get a deer rifle, there's all kinds of uh, additional guns that you can add. And I think the cameraman would agree, you can never have too many guns, right, cameraman? <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting the eye roll. You guys can even hear that on camera. But in all seriousness, I think a firearm for food security and personal protection is something you got to look at starting out. So let's throw in a bonus. We've talked about our top five. Let's talk about a bonus here. To me, I think a bonus would be, come here. 
would be a good dog. A good dog that could possibly, could possibly uh, protect your livestock. I'm not quite sure what this dog does. He doesn't, doesn't do much of that. <laughs> a dog that has some sort of value on the farm. And of course, there's just companionship that you have from an animal. So if you're homesteading by yourself, then a dog can obviously bring that companion. So this, this would be one of my bonus things to have. You know, something about a homestead, having a good dog would be very, very helpful. You ready for this? All right, go. That's not the stick. So to upgrade the dog, you can always go with a wife, one that's aggressive and passionate, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> hardly an equal comparison by any means. <laughs> So what do you think, Kelly? We leave anything out? Probably. Yeah, probably. <laughs> so obviously this is just five things out a, a myriad of options. So comment below, those of you all that are on your homestead, what you felt was some of the first, the very first tools you had to have. And again, we know most people aren't in a vacuum, but we, I think for the sake of this video, we have to pretend that you're starting with nothing because what we assume that everyone has, maybe people don't. You know, I was born with a chainsaw in my hand, I believe, it seems like, but um, not everybody has a chainsaw or a firearm, those type of things. So comment below, let us know your feedback and what you all think. And don't forget to check out Giltech, a really cool American-made company. All right, take care, everybody. So I realized after shooting this that I really need to add a footnote to this to make this video maybe more helpful, hopefully, if you find it helpful. But really, the, uh, to answer the question with Troy, what did you buy? When you first bought this land 20 years ago, what did you think was the most important tools to have? Now again, taking into consideration, I had hand tools already, I had the garden tools, I had um, um, mechanics tools, those type of things. So I had all that basic stuff taken care of. But when we moved here and we sold our timber, so I had some extra folding money, if you know what I mean, from selling the timber, the first thing I bought was a brand new high-end steel chainsaw, a steel weed eater, a side-by-side, -side, and a tractor. So those were really the four key things I purchased. Now my tractor was an old, I guess it was a little gray market tractor. I think it was $3,000 is what I had in it. The four-wheeler had probably had about $4,000 in it. Uh, the chainsaw and the weed eaters were just under 1000 so that was what I felt was most important. You know, the firearms I had, the tools, all those things we already had in place. But those are the things that I felt were the most important. So I thought it'd be best to be transparent on that so you can see what I prioritize. Now again, those priorities are based upon what you see behind me. A lot of uneven terrain and a lot of forest. So if you've got, got flat land, uh, flat two acres, and there's not a lot of trees, and, and you don't have to worry about driving up the side of a mountain, then maybe you don't make those same uh, purchases that I did. All right. Appreciate it, everybody.